Hey there! I'm Sarah A. Chrisman, the author of The Tales of Chetsamoka and lots of other books about the Victorian era. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Arabia Steamship Museum, which my husband Gabriel and I visited recently. The tale of the Arabia Steamer is a true life story of a sunken ship and buried treasure, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Gabriel and I certainly did. Before I get started, though, I just want to take a moment to mention my new anthology that just came out, The Haunted Wheel, 13 Victorian Stories of Ghosts, Phantoms, Apparitions, and Visions from the 19th Century. Now, these are stories from the antique books and magazines in our collection, and these stories were too good to just keep to ourselves, so I've typed them up for your reading pleasure. You can get the book on Amazon, and I think you'll really enjoy it. And now from stories that were lost and then found in old books, to an entire steamship that was lost and then found again. Fans of the Tales of Chetsumoko will know from the stories of Captain Vosserman's ship Raindrop and Ca Captain Kellum's great trans-Pacific steamer Western Dawn just how important steamships were to people's lives in the 19th century. To folks living on the world's great waterways in the Victorian era, a visit from a steamship meant the arrival of people, stories, and tangible goods from all around the steamer's other ports of call, whether those were on the ocean, the Great Lakes and inland seas like Puget Sound, or mighty rivers like the Missouri. The story of the great steamship Arabia takes us to the Missouri River, a mighty waterway of promise to those who followed it west into the newly opened country, and also a river of peril. In the year 1856, five years before the attack on Fort Sumter sparked the American Civil War, and 44 years before L. Frank Baum's Dorothy first left the cornfields of Kansas to travel to the magical city of Oz, the Missouri was a river of undefined and shifting boundaries. Like the other major tributaries of the Mississippi, and indeed like the mighty Mississippi itself, the river's banks were constantly changing and moving. Port towns could become landlocked miles inland when the river slithered away from them. Pilots on the river were always on the lookout for sandbanks that seemed to spring out of nowhere, and for the treacherous snags of dead trees that sped down river many of them floating so low in the waterline that even the most skilled and seasoned of riverboat pilots couldn't see them in time. On September 5, 1856, one of these snags struck and sunk the steamship Arabia, a 171-foot-long steamer carrying pioneer passengers heading for a new life on the frontier. The Arabia was capable of carrying 222 tons of cargo, and at the time of her sinking she was filled with pioneer tools, goods for general stores, and federal mail. With a blessing, the passengers and crew of the Arabia all made it safe to shore. Sadly, though, their luggage did not, and all the dearest personal possessions and daily necessities which they had planned to take with them to start a new life were lost, under the waters of the raging river, as were literally tons upon tons of brand-new, never-been-used goods that had been destined for newly erected general stores of the growing West. Those stores and the people who relied on them would go without the supplies on which their livelihoods depended for a while. They would have to wait for a later steamer to refill their shelves. The Arabia was gone underneath the Missouri, along with the brand new buttons and sparkling glass beads that should have adorned pioneer clothes, the bolts of fabric that would have been sewn into the clothing itself, and the ready-made garments just waiting to be displayed in stores and then to be bought and worn under a bright prairie sky. Panes of window glass, hinges, doorknobs, locks, keys, files, screws, drills, axes. Just about everything necessary to make and or repair houses. And then to fill those houses and truly make them homes. Dishes. So many dishes. And cutlery. Pots. Pans everything to run a kitchen. Candles, candlesticks, and oil lamps of different kinds. 
mirrors to show a woman's pretty face or to help a man shave, and slates and slate pencils for children to study their school lessons. Matches for lighting cooking fires or to strike a light in the darkness for the candles and lamps. Even jewelry and perfume. All these treasures sank down into the riverbed of the Missouri, where they were buried in deep layers of mud and silt. They would stay there for over 130 years. After the Missouri had buried the great steamer Arabia deep in sediment and invisible to human eyes, the mighty but ever restless river slithered away from the site where the Arabia had gone down. The newly emerged land, some of the richest soil in the world, was planted with crops, and the sunken Arabia and all the treasures she held were forgotten by time. Then, in 1988, the Hawley family heard the story of the lost steamer and it captured their imaginations and their spirit of adventure. The Hawleys were hard-working blue-collar men who ran a family business repairing air conditioners and furnaces. They weren't professional treasure hunters, and yet the story of the Arabia started them on a real-life adventure that was better than anything Indiana Jones or the Goonies ever lived through. Because after a great deal of work, blood, sweat, and tears, they found the lost Arabia with all her treasures. They could have sold these pristine artifacts and made a fortune, but instead they kept the collection intact, along with what was left of the ship, and turned it all into a world-class museum. While Gabriel and I were there, we were lucky enough to meet and talk with one of the Hollies, a very kind man who I considered it a privilege and an honor to meet. When Gabriel and I walked through the museum and gazed on its amazing collection, as a writer, my very favorite part were the boxes and boxes of pens and inkwells on display. Just seeing them there, brand new and unused, made me think about how many stories those pristine pens could write about their own experiences as part of such a hoard of treasure. As a writer, those pens were my favorite. As a woman, I was utterly delighted when I learned that the lost perfumes found aboard the Arabia had not only retained their scent, but they'd subsequently been replicated, and these reproduced perfumes from the 19th century were being offered for sale by the museum's gift shop. If you've seen my video on Victorian perfumes, then you already know how fond I am of rediscovered fragrances like these. They're such an utterly beautiful way to really connect with the past. Everything about the Arabia collection is a palpable connection to history, from the tools meant for carpenters to the rare and extensive collection of rubber overshoes. Rubber was a popular material in the 19th century, but it degrades so readily that few examples survived long enough to make it into museums. The unique low oxygen conditions in which the Arabia was buried preserved these everyday items so they could bring the past to life for us again. The whole museum is a vibrant time capsule, one of the best I've ever seen, and believe me, I have seen a lot of museums. If you ever find yourself in Kansas City, I hope you'll take some time to visit the Arabia and discover the ship's buried treasures for yourself. You will not regret it, trust me. Thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a nice thumbs up and remember to tell your friends about my books, especially the new anthology that just came out. Happy reading!